This is the story of Clara Grant Santucci, a West Virginia native who grew from modest beginnings in Doddridge County to become one of America's elite athletes. I have five brothers and sisters, so six children, two parents. It was kind of like a little house on the prairie feel. <laughs> it was a one-room schoolhouse converted to living. We didn't spend a lot of time indoors. We didn't have TV, but we had plenty of outdoors. We had a, a low income. My mom really put time into being a stay-at-home mom. We had a huge garden. We raised chickens. We bought grain and ground it, and you know, I baked all our bread and stuff like that, and Claire learned how to do some of that. It was a very good, healthy lifestyle. You know, that girl played outside. She played in the forest. She chopped wood. She drug wood back. It's a hunting family. It's, it's a surviving family. I don't think most of us grew up that way. We'd cut wood in the summertime to prepare for winters. It kind of built a good foundation for being a strong athlete. It was just normal activity. Um, others were maybe at home playing video games and she was out preparing for her future. I just enjoyed the outdoors so much and going out in the garden, just pick things right off the vine and eating them and foraging even. We learned all about what you could eat wild. It was just fun. I think she came to college tougher than most guys that came to college here, the way she grew up. She grew up hard. We had the electric go out one winter where we had a big blizzard and it was 10 days of no power. <laughs> that meant no water for us. So we had to melt snow and we had to huddle around that wood stove to stay warm. I'd say this, I'd say if I put every woman in a room and turned on a stove and put their hand on a stove, who'd be the last to take it off? I'd probably say Claire Grant. It'd be hard for me to imagine someone going longer. My mom homeschooled us. I'd have spelling tests, and my reward for getting 100% on my spelling test would be um, bullets to shoot my 22, <laughs> so I could target practice. <laughs> And I like I like to target practice. I like to um, to hit the bullseye. The word soft, um, gentle, kind. Those are all words that stereotypically might define these young ladies. Inside of them all, though, there's there's an exceptional want to be perfect. She was self motivated from an early age. We lived on a gravel road, and she'd run up and down that road summer, winter daily, really dedicated. I noticed that in fifth or sixth grade, when I ran the mile in gym class, I knew that running was right up my alley. I just wanted to see how fast I could go around the little gym 21 times. <laughs> and my gym teacher saw this. All the other kids were just kind of doing it because they had to, but I, I took it seriously. And um, he sat me down on the bleachers and had a little newspaper clipping with them of the high schooler that had just broken the two mile school record. So he sat me down and pointed to it and I remember him saying that this can be you someday. I'd run a mile up to, I think I got up to like six miles and I kept getting better and I won state track titles and broke school records and my dreams were to be a national class runner. I knew she wanted to go to college, um, and I knew we couldn't afford it. She went to some cross-country camps, and she was offered a full-ride scholarship, which she turned down from Moorhead, Kentucky. And I'm like, why did you turn that down? <laughs> she says, I want Sean Cleary for my coach. He saw my my determination, that hard work ethic didn't really, you can't coach that. He says, <laughs> you have that or you don't. She knew what she wanted. She did her homework. She knew that he was actually coaching 
people who were going to go to the Olympics or had been to the Olympics. And that's what she wanted. She said, I'm going to the Olympics. She became one of a long line of great West Virginia kids that, that I feel the rest of the country were overlooking. Clara is not fast. She would not win many races in a 100-yard dash. One of the slowest kids in our program, to be honest with you, ever. But Clara's got more stamina than anyone I've ever met. As a matter of fact, if there were a race that said, we're going to run up Mount Everest, she'd probably win. But other teammates could do things she couldn't do. And it wasn't because they tried harder, and it wasn't that they, that they tried to master their trade. It's genetic. They can run faster. So I popped up behind her one day on our track, and uh, Murray Louise Aslan and Carrie Bland, two greats, probably between them have 20 All-Americans. Um, come flying by. I had them doing a speed workout and Claire didn't know I was there and I walked up behind her and I heard her growling. I mean growling. And I'm like, what? What is that? And, and she just said, it just makes me so mad they can sprint like that. And that would be Claire. Never be talked about again. While she is soft-spoken and gentle and, and very kind, she's nasty inside. What's going on inside her head is that she wants to destroy you. And she'll do it nicely and she'll be kind and it's all very genuine but when she puts her shoes on to race there's a desire inside that's i won't say it's unparalleled but it's very rare she is the sweetest person and so when you get to know her competitive spirit and how intense you are it it takes you back she wants it so bad and she is willing to work as hard as anyone to get it just came so naturally to her early, told many of us that, that this marathon was going to be her future. In 2011, I ran the Boston Marathon. It was a great first experience and I handled it well, just being such a big stage. I was third American and 16th overall in the international field. I was running against some people that I had only read about as a high schooler who were a national class in high school and I was beating them. It really was uh, a dream come true when I crossed the finish line. It got me my first sponsorship. It allowed me to become an actual elite level marathoner and runner. It was just amazing to get that kind of exposure. Of the six or eight major marathons in the world, you're, you're, you know, you're talking, God, 20s, 30s, 40, 50,000 runners running, a million around the world doing it. To put her in the top 0.1% is, is, I mean, it's outstanding. Pittsburgh's a big, big, big deal. And a year ago, the strategy that unfolded that day was that she sat with the lead pack of women, a number of Ethiopian ladies that on paper were superior to her, upwards of two to three minutes, and ran away from them. That was a very fun experience for her because it gave her a lot of notoriety locally. It really put her name on a higher level, I think. She had run extremely well at the Boston Marathon a few years earlier, but Pittsburgh put her on a whole new level. This year, very different. Same type of field, but she was down by a couple minutes. When we got into her ears that she had closed 33 seconds in one mile, her eyes lit up and you could see another fire. One of my sayings was, these are my hills, and this means more to me than anyone else out there, so if I have sight of her, I'm gonna do everything I can to catch her. I saw her at 23 miles, and I was still about 45 seconds back. I knew I was closing on her, and then I saw her look back, and I know when someone looks back, <laughs> it's a sign of, of they're not thinking about the finish line, they're very tired, and that they're worried about you so once you put a little bit of fear in someone you can really use that to your advantage and even though I'm not a very intimidating person off the course or <laughs> or look like I could actually um, really want to destroy you <laughs> I do want to destroy my competition on the course just about who's willing to hurt the most and put the most into it at the finish so I ran by her and I kept going until I got to the finish line and I saw the finish line. 
ran right into the race director's arms. <laughs> There's one thing to be able to win something once, right? Because you got the excitement of it being new and the psychology of it. But to go back and do the same thing again, it means she's a fighter. The Kenyans and Ethiopians are unbelievable talents. They're, they're just incredible. But, but every once in a while, when an American comes through to win a race like that, people smile. So you qualify for the Olympic trials based on time on a certified course within a two-year span before the Olympic trials. I've always been able to do that easily. There's usually around 200 women that qualify for that race. And then from there, they take the top three on that day. So it's a brutal system. The last Olympic team, the first three finishers are all back. I'd say three or four are in the driver's seat and then three or four others are hoping for mistakes on the day. And I think Clara falls into that second category, but that's why she's been training for four years, to be ready for a moment when a door opens. You have to be ready one particular day. You can't have an illness or an injury and you have to be in the best shape of your life and finish in the top three. She's running 16, 17 miles per day. She runs six days a week twice, all year. She gets up every morning, runs four or five miles, and afternoons are between 10 and 12. Some days, 10 and 18. Long runs on Sunday will get up as high as 22, 23 miles, regardless of the weather. She has the ability to block out everything and train. If you don't really, really want to do it with all your being, there's, there's no point. Christmas morning, a world-class marathoner probably runs 17 miles on Christmas. There's no days off. She runs twice. They, it never ends. There's a lot of work that goes into to one moment. For Clara to make the Olympic team, that would change her life. That it would allow her to take training stints at altitude, to leave Morgantown, maybe in the harshest part of the winter, to be in Florida, be in Arizona. Just go to the places where they can have altitude and safe running conditions. Running in Morgantown is, is wonderful. Hills, anything that makes you tough is great in our sport, but it's also not safe at times. Um, the ice and the snow, and, and you just can't get the quality work in. So she would be more on par with those women that have consistently made these national teams, giving her probably a big leg up to help that part of her future. My dad always asked me when I was growing up what I wanted to be when I grew up. So. He put that seed in my mind to think about my future and just believe that I could do anything. It's the true American story. It's knowing that hard work every day can pay off and can make you great. You don't need anything extreme. You just need to have heart and passion and work hard every day, and that's, that's Clara's story. The Clara Grant Santucci story has been presented by Prim Law. Help keep Clara's dream alive to reach the 2016 Olympic Games by supporting her training. You can contribute directly to Clara at GoFundMe.com slash Clara26.